Hello everyone, thanks for being here today. And I'm Madhu from Team Together channel. I help people to find their own potential with the specific examples on our daily lives and to bring a different perspective for each and every things what I come across, I help the people in that way. So, um, once again, thanks for joining me here. Today I want to bring you a, a very interesting topic with my views, starting to the point. What is essential is invisible to our eyes. Now that is a subject I'm going to discuss. To get into the specifics, you know, our very essential to our survival is air, oxygen. The very oxygen comes nothing but from the trees. Now that's, that's very simple and everyone understands that. But what is happening as we speak? And in the, in the name of industrial revolution or in the name of industries, uh, you know, we are exploiting a lot of trees in our cities. If you look across, look around, there are many trees. What was there 10 years ago, 20 years ago, the big, big, big trees, what I'm referring to, is not there anymore because we are breaking those trees and then making a nice roads and nice buildings, nice constructions, which is taking away eventually the, the very source of oxygen. And um, the stories predicts, you know, if this is the way we continuously move forward and uh, with the global warming, uh, less than 300 years down the line, there is a lot of challenges going to be for the oxygen. I mean, there is no oxygen means, I'm sure, entire life of humans and then animal forms, which is going to affect drastically. Now, air cannot be seen. All of us know, but that is very essential. That's what I said. What is essential to our life is invisible. And just because, but then don't forget that, you know, if you stop or if you cannot take a breathing for the maximum you can stay up to is three minutes. You know, if you stop breathing for three minutes, if you can hold three minutes, that's well and good. But beyond that, it's pretty much rare that you're going to survive without the same pure oxygen. So my point of reflection is that, you know, uh, that we as a as a you know human beings you know we need to have a responsibility for you know planting a tree in our lifetime imagine you plant a tree today and you're passing on to your next generations and then coming generations you know there are so studies um you know uh, some of the small seeds like you know banyan trees uh, in some places in india it does have about 250 to 300 year story of the banyan trees are still alive and the roots are spread about three acres at the base. And imagine such kind of a big trees, how much of oxygen are they giving? Recent incidents, what is going on with Amazon forest is one another classic example. See, uh, we cannot control the nature. Now that is one thing that, you know, one example I wanted to bring also to connecting to that. See, the rains are very essential. You know, the nature doing its part. Uh, suppose even if you plant a tree, you know, if there is no rain or there's no water to, you know, um, take care of it, it's it's going to uh, wipe off uh, eventually. I mean, uh, you cannot be, uh, you know, buying a water and pouring it for a couple of years because that's not going to happen. So you need to still trust the nature how it works. You know, that's how we are com we are connected and communicated in each other in a different form. See, the trees are very, very, very essential to all our human lives. That's most essential, but then still it is invisible. And then my point is that, you know, we need to bring awareness into, at least, you know, uh, being in our houses, around our houses, we can plant a couple of trees in which you can see it and look after uh, wherever you have a place, if you're fortunate enough, or maybe you can do something that within your limits where you could be able to take care of like what we, how we can take care of our kids and how we nurture them you know that's the way you know the care means like you know we need to look after so and then we pass that to the generations and at least you know its story suggests that you know uh, two mature trees can supply a family of four oxygen for an entire day so that's about 550 liters of oxygen is what is required per person per day for you to survive imagine your lifetime how much oxygen we are taking Stories suggest, you know, on an average, 444 trees are per each person is across at this point of time around the world. However, particularly in India, 
comparing to the, the population for each person there are only 28 trees you know that's the calculations so uh, that shows it all that where do we stand and for the industrial purposes when i mean to say each person each person uses about seven trees seven trees in an year's time so imagine that where we are heading into in the form of your paper pencils wood napkins toilet and tissues papers anything related to the paper is all of us know obviously is coming from the tree a tree is being so useful to all of us for the entire humanity but i think it's our moral responsibility to respect okay when the tree dies for natural reasons is a different story that we could use it um, but however breaking it for the purpose of our uh, you know industries to expand is something that we should always be looking at it and that's what we should be educating our kids and our people around us and in your lifetime if you plant a tree that is the best thing that you're going to give for the future generations and if you happen to do a minimum 10 in your lifetime which is possible you know which is possible and the way we can take care of uh, you know the kids you know if you nurture them uh, till to certain level and then nature takes care of itself with that note i would like to leave it today and uh, i wish you have a wonderful day do please leave it your thoughts and how effective it's going to be for the you know future generations if you plant a tree today um, thank you very much for joining me and talk to you soon bye bye